Here's today's Forex video blog for November 24th, 2010 from Leverage FX. These charts are free with many of our supported Forex brokers. Open an account there and you get our software for free and our software uses eSignal data and most of the brokers we work with give you free eSignal data which is $100 a month value free if you trade just 10 lots per month. So we're going to go over some of the best trades that are found today using our tools. Here we have a narrow range pattern, however the price is above the hourly moving average. Daily, weekly, monthly, or the weekly and monthly trend as you can see on the bottom are up. And so when it breaks out of here it's a little bit less likely to go down because the longer term trend is up. So if you do take that trade, be aware where the Fibonacci profit target levels are in this level and you might want to get out at the first or second Fib target, especially since our real time counter trend signals gave buy signals right here and the statistical weakness on the way, way down wasn't that weak. Anything underneath the dotted 20 line is not that intense. If it's close to it, uh, you can consider that a decent momentum. Anything less than half of the dotted 20 line is nothing and it's not likely to give you much more than a, you know, you can see a 15 pip trade here. There's not a whole lot of momentum in the euro. There's not a whole lot of momentum here in the dollar yen. So most of you probably wouldn't take too many trades. Once it broke from underneath to above the hourly and had a pullback right here, uh, you can use our momentum tools. If the up move has more momentum than the down move, you can buy pullbacks and of course use the Fibonacci profit targets to uh, estimate you know where to get out of trades. It works phenomenally. Here's the CAD yen. The daily and monthly trends are up. It comes down and finds support here at the hourly when it's slightly underneath it. We have major support underneath there. Monthly R1 pivot, 50 day moving average, um, another moving average down here, and my projected FIB level. So you have a beautiful little wedge pattern right here. Wedge patterns that form over two, three hour period, usually pretty decent trades, and that market took off. You can see explosive momentum on the way up. This is our trend intensity system, and so you're looking to buy either a pullback here with your stop right underneath that low or a sideways breakout with your stop underneath that sideways range. And you can see the market exploded up to some major resistance areas up here and again had off the chart strength. You might have given it one more shot on a pullback. Be a little careful, wait for a little sideways consolidation, get in and get out up here near the high. This one was too statistically strong to even think about doing a counter trend trade at the highs. Here's a New Zealand yen. We have the daily trend down, the weekly trend down, the monthly trends up. The price is hovering right around the hourly here. We have a narrow range pattern. Um, you wouldn't have wanted to buy the breakout to the upside because the weekly trend's down. That's the primary longer term trend that we focus on. Plus, you're right at a FIB level, which is likely to be major resistance. You can see it stopped the up move last night and wasn't able to get higher. So there's a very little chance of it going up here especially since after it went up with a little bit of momentum it all but died. Breakouts uh, in the opposite direction of the weekly trend are less likely to work. You have a little sideways range right here. It breaks the hourly which is a system in and of itself and it breaks the narrow range four hour low. The trend was down. The bars you can see even upon breakout it got super dark red which means super weakness and of course the market went down to the next support level which is a 200 day moving average and my projected Fibonacci level which it stopped at a pip. You know, because the trend's down, because you have explosive weakness here, you might have looked to sell the next up move, came right back up to the hourly, found resistance to go short right here with your stop above the high. And when it pulled back, there's a little bit less weakness than before, and it double bottomed here right at a major 200 day moving average. That's a major support area, and you got an even bigger support level, my Fibonacci projected levels right underneath there. So, good place to get out of that trade. Because the weekly and uh, daily trend are down, and because you have this major resistance area up here, I wouldn't be looking to buy this because it's likely to stall and hit this resistance area and, and not go through it. So the, the trades are only two of them to the downside. Here's the Australian yen. The daily trends down, the weekly trends down. When the price is above the hourly, it's more likely to go up. You can see the 20 day moving average right here. It was going sideways there. Daily, weekly trend down. wasn't able to break over that level. You might have gone short here with the previous week's low, the hourly moving average in my Fibonacci area as a profit target. Uh, that would have given you about a 40 pips as a counter trend trade. And I wouldn't have bought here because it was so weak, but the Fib levels are great places to look for 
support and buying as the price comes down to it. So when the price went up and came back down again, you have a double bottom divergence right here. You can see one third the weakness of before, double bottom right at a major support level. I would have waited it before it broke back above the uh, previous week's low right here and either the weekly S1 or 20 day moving average here at 50 is a good profit target. So you're risking 10, 15 pips to make you know, an estimated 30 and I would have got out of the trade here. I wouldn't have bought during this pullback here because it has major resistance right here. But once it breaks above here, because it was so strong, this is a trend explosion system. You get into that trade and realize that the weekly trend is against you. So if it goes up and stalls in any of these resistance areas, you want to get out of the trade. So I would have exited somewhere up in here. Uh, and because the weekly trend was down, I'm, I'm not sure I would have bought any of these pullbacks, but you could have bought a few more times on dips, um, the, the best trades I outlined before. Pound yen, daily trend down, weekly trend down. When price is underneath the hourly, you are looking to sell. Unfortunately, you have a FIB level here, which is very likely to be a support level. You can see it stopped price earlier here and here, finally went through it, false breakout. Um, so I probably would have avoided the pound yen on this trade. Uh, it does have a nice little one, two, three low right here. After it makes uh, a low and comes up and comes down, you can see the weakness is no longer there anymore. You might have given this a shot with this breakout right here. It's not, it's not that good a trade because it could stall here at this resistance area, the hourly, or here where it actually did. Also note, it pulls back after it breaks the hourly. This is what I call a retest. Once a resistance area gets broken, it oftentimes tests it didn't go underneath it and you could buy here if it didn't have this major resistance area here. If the next sell area was up here it would be a great great buy. So I probably would have passed on that. Euro Yen, again the daily, weekly, monthly trends down, the price is underneath the hourly so we're looking to sell. This is an absolutely perfect textbook trade, very high probability trade because all the time frame trends are down including real time trend and the bars were red even before the breakout. This is a rect sideways rectangle pattern. You go short and this is your profit target. The next support level is the previous day's low and it's about 50 pips below. And because all the time frame trends line up here and because the market falls with extreme weakness, it goes through there and it hits our trading zones projected low and stops on a dime. Because this is so weak, you're looking to sell the next up move. So I would have gone short right here, right at the previous day's low as a resistance area. And when it comes back down, you can see there's no more weakness. This is a textbook one, two, three low. If you take a chance on a counter trend trade, the next resistance area is all the way up here. So the risk versus reward is worth it. You take any trade that gives you one and a half to two times bigger estimated or potential profit than what you're risking. I would have waited for this to start to go back up and break back above the previous day's low right here after showing no weakness on the next drop. Put my stop underneath here. As soon as it goes up, I would tighten it in half. Once it goes up 15 pips, I would have moved my stop to break even here. And I more than likely would have got out here at the hourly moving average as it's not likely uh, it usually stalls here and reverses. I wouldn't have sold this, uh, but if you did, because it went up with a lot of momentum. If you did short right here as it came down, notice there's not that much weakness just like before. So if you are in a small profit in this trade, you get the heck out. I wouldn't have bought right here because there's major resistance, a lot of selling right above it. It doesn't meet my risk versus reward criteria. Here's the dollar CAD. The longer term trend, the daily trend starts off down, the weekly trends mixed but not very weak or or very strong. Same thing with the monthly. So this thing goes sideways here for quite a while, a rectangle pattern, and it's above the hourly. Actually, it's underneath the hourly, so I'm not so sure I would have bought down here. If the weekly or monthly trend was super strong, I would have bought that sideways rectangle pattern. And because, actually, you know, I don't really see anything I would have bought. Uh, I don't like to buy underneath the hourly unless it's way down here near a FIB level. If it was down here near the FIB level, I would have bought that. I would have avoided all these trades. Uh, it went up with very little momentum. Counter trend traders might have looked to go short right here once it broke down under the sideways range. But again, you're going against the slightly upwards weekly and monthly trend, so it's a little bit lower probability. I tend to try to look for much higher probability trades than that. If you were to take that trade, you want to get out here at this support level. You might have shorted this 
uh, retest of this resistance area again. And probably one of the best trades of the day, once you saw that it was going up without that much momentum, and it spent almost all the day underneath the hourly, which is a sign that's likely to go down, you might have shorted here with um, the Fibonacci area down here as your profit target, or the real-time intraday level. Now, if these levels, if the price comes down and stalls here, you want to get out of your trade. If it shoots through them, then as soon as it goes sideways, you get the heck out of the trade. So that was that turned out to be a pretty decent trade, and I would not have sold underneath the lower containment band because most of the time the market uh, reverses and goes up. Uh, that trade did work if you did take a, a really risky trade, but uh, I wouldn't have taken it. Here's the dollar Swiss. Price is chopping around. It's above the hourly, which is a sign it's more likely to go up. The daily, weekly, monthly trends are up. You might have bought this little uh, wedge pattern right here with the previous day's high as your profit target. The market shot above there. Pretty decent momentum, but then it came right back into the previous day's range. That's a sign of weakness. That's a false breakout. So you might have bought the hourly here. I wouldn't because the upwards momentum on the previous move wasn't enough. It was a trend reversal signal right here. But then the market comes up and double tops at the previous day's high with less momentum than before. And that's a pretty good sign that the market's not going to go up. Because the daily, weekly, and monthly trends are up, I'm not sure I would have sold there. Aggressive scalpers might have and made a little bit on that trade. Uh, you might have also sold the low of the sideways rectangle pattern right here. Initially, your stop's down here. Once it moves your way, you tighten it. Uh, and don't get greedy, draw your fibs on this. And look to get out at one of the first or second fib target. Here's the pound dollar. The currency is right underneath the hourly moving average. The daily, weekly, monthly trends down. And a lot of times, the first time after a big move down, it comes up and touches the hourly, you want to go short. You can see it pulled back about 25 pips. Then it had a false breakout over the high or over the hourly right here, you might have gone short here, and it's falling with pretty substantial weakness. So on a two minute or tick chart, you might have sold this little up move here and here for some small profits. Uh, the FIB level, uh, again, I did a good job of predicting the likely highs and lows today with our FIB levels that found support. There was less momentum than before, and you might have got out of the trade here. Because all the time frame trends down, you probably wouldn't have wanted to buy down there. Uh, if the weekly and monthly trends are up, you would have looked to buy down there at the lower containment bands and FIB targets. Now the market exploded up, has a lot of momentum, uh, pulls back down. I usually don't buy these underneath the hourly, but momentum-wise, you can see the up move was twice as strong as the down move. Uh, the rest of the day, I don't see any trades I would take. Above the hourly, typically you're looking for buys, but the next resistance area is just right above here, followed by other selling areas, other selling areas. It's just in a zone where it's likely to cause you a lot of uh, aggravation, so I tend to avoid those trades. Like before, when you saw this sideways range here, if, even if you sold right here, it's got a good distance to travel before the next support buy area. That makes it worth taking a risk. You don't want to buy when the next sell or buy area is just right next to it. Here's a euro dollar. This is a textbook trade. Came down last night to my FIB level right here and carried over today. Uh, narrow range sideways breakouts underneath the hourly here so it's likely to go down it could stall out here but the daily weekly monthly trends are down it's underneath the hourly narrow range breakouts tend to uh, cause decent trends and the lower containment band is your estimated profit target down here near 10 so that's a 67 pip move and the market's so weak you want to possibly sell this next up move because it's a trend explosion system and the market goes down and goes sideways so you try to get out of this with a small profit or break even or a small loss uh, and normally you want to sell a retracement back up to a FIB level, but the market's super strong. So uh, I probably still would have done this. You can always take trades with half your normal trade size if you feel a little anxious about it. And then again, notice on the pullback, it had half the weakness that it had strength. You don't want to buy right here because the FIB level's right there. Once it gets above the FIB level, you might take a chance at a quick scalp uh, right here. However, keep in mind the daily, weekly, monthly trends down, so it's not as much likely to go up. This is also a textbook uh, Fibonacci Elliott two-wave pullback trade. You draw it on the first wave, and when it hits the FIB targets, you look to sell. And especially the Elliott two-wave FIB pullback system, anytime the daily, weekly, monthly trends down, and you can see it goes up there. Right here, I wouldn't have sold it. But once the momentum starts to die out, you could have looked for sells up here, and that was one of the better trades of the day, too. Uh, also, once it broke underneath the previous day's low again and went sideways, this is also another beautiful sideways rectangle pattern and the market fell about 20 pips.
and that concludes our day's trading video blog.